different. But the two big categories have to do with impulse control. This word operant refers to history of reinforcement and punishment. So it's stuff that's happening in the forefront of the brain up here. Um, and that would include leash reactivity. That's where your dog is thrashing around on the leash. If they were loose, they'd be fine. But when they're on the leash and they see a dog, they pull you across the street, bark and whine. Barrier reactivity, we see that a lot where dogs are out at the fence line barking, people going by, but if they come into the yard, they're fine. Predatory aggression. This one, I, I, I used to think that, oh, that, that'll never come up, and now I get cases of that all the time around here. Um, and that's where the, the, the dog attacks a small animal that shouldn't, like a cat or another small dog. That's called predatory aggression. I've read of cases of it happening to humans. I haven't personally seen it. I'm not sure that I'd be willing to work with that. I would probably refer it out. Um, but it is possible. Um, and then resource guarding is usually, usually an impulse control issue, but it can be an emotional issue. It falls under both categories, depending. For all of the time we spend on all of these, we usually spend more time working just, it's simply fear. The dog is simply afraid, That's, it's, it's that. It's that impossible, but that simple at the same time. The dog is afraid and lashes out. And we call that fearful aggression or fearful reactivity. It also happens when the dog is angry. We see that sometimes, especially associated with pain. And then sometimes resource guarding is an emotional issue, especially if they're resource guarding a person. So all those other 30 or 40 subcategories that I mentioned, they're going to fall under one of these headings. And the reason that this is so important is, is that this is telling the dog to stay, or telling the dog to heal, or having the dog look at you, or finding some other behavior to do. That's going to be the solution to this. That will be part of the solution to this, but the first thing that has to happen is we have to address that emotion. If the dog is terrified, we might be able to get them to hold still, but that's not a solution because they'll eventually explode. And so best practices says, if your dog is afraid, don't address the behavior directly. Address the emotion. Let's help them not be afraid. 